this is Tom Bernanke. Today I'm talking about the tibialis anterior tendon. So on the front of your ankle and coming down to the middle inside of your ankle. So that's your first cuneiform and the navicular bone. So this is a very underappreciated tendon that can cause top of the foot pain, front of the ankle pain, especially in runners and athletes. So what the anterior tibialis tendon does is it both lifts the foot up and turns it in and like this. So this is called adduction, inversion, and dorsiflexion. And when you're walking, it also stabilizes your arch by pulling up on the middle. So it does four important functions. And what happens with that tibialis anterior tendon is you can get anterior tibial tendonitis and that can cause top of the foot pain and front of the ankle pain kind of on the inside top of the foot and into this little bump right here. So this is a very common problem. A lot of people never heard of this tendon, but it can cause top of the foot pain. And we're gonna go over all the best things to take care of it, how to diagnose it, how to take care of it, when to see your podiatrist, the best shoes, the best orthotics, the best stretches. And we're gonna go over all that, but please help me out by giving us a like and a comment. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. So there's a lot of causes of top of the foot pain, and the tibialis anterior is one of them. But I always put a disclaimer out here, go see your podiatrist, because sometimes you could have a cyst on top of your foot. Sometimes people jam their foot, and this bone right here, called the Liz Frank joint, you can damage the ligaments and the tendons and crack the cartilage in there. And a lot of the times when it's not getting better, it could be something more serious that your podiatrist should help out with. So that's why we evaluate it. And sometimes it's really obvious what it is. Sometimes it's arthritis, sometimes it's an injury, sometimes it's more than a tendon, sometimes it's a cyst. In the office, we can do an ultrasound. So if you're in Michigan, we'll do the ultrasound on the first appointment if you're worried or we could get an MRI if there's further concern, and we could really work it up with a lot of treatment options. We have stuff available in the office, like shockwave therapies, lasers that can really help get these things treated, but that's not why you're here, most likely. What you're here for is how do you take care of that? So the first thing you wanna do is pain relief. So there's pills available. You can take some anti-inflammatories. You could do rice, so that's rest, ice, compression, elevation. So that can really help take some pressure off there, but I'm gonna show you how to ice, how to massage it, and how to get it feeling better. Here's a big thick muscle on the front of the ankle and the top of the foot. But what you wanna do is you wanna ice and massage your plantar fascia and your calf muscle because if those muscles are less sore and less tight, so see your plantar fascia right here with an ice ball or a frozen water bottle, that will make the tibialis anterior work less hard. So that's working on the antagonistic muscles. That's a fancy word for saying the opposing muscles. Loosen them up, massage those opposing muscles, and the tibialis anterior will have to work less hard. So that's what I'm doing right here. Grab a massage stick. These are $7. This is one of my favorite things to do, but this will help your tibialis anterior. This is a simple thing you can do as you massage the tightness and soreness out of your calf muscle, but you can do the tibialis anterior too. See, I'm doing it right there. That's my tibialis anterior and your plantar fascia. You wanna do it all, loosen them all up. That will help that little front of the leg uh, and top of the foot muscle have to do less work. And then you wanna stretch your hamstrings, your calf muscles. So warm up first. I'm always a big fan of one to two minutes of warming up when you're playing sports or you're about to start a work day, then stretch with a towel, do your hamstring, do your calf muscle. That's gonna feel really good almost immediately. You're gonna have a lot of pain relief. Another great thing is creams. So Voltaren cream can work as an anti-inflammatory prescription cream, but what you also wanna do is things like BioFreeze or you could do moisturizing lotions, essential oils, that can make a big difference as well. Pills, they can help, but only for like a week or two. Your ibuprofen, your Voltaren uh, creams, uh, your, that's an anti-inflammatory as well. You know, things like acetaminophen or Tylenol won't help that much, but don't make this a long-term solution. It's not going to fix the root cause of your problem. So the real cause, in my opinion, is uneven tightness. So if the back of your hamstring, the back of your knee, back of your calf is tight, these front muscles will have to work harder. So they're gonna have to try lift against the tight muscles back here. That's called an antagonistic relationship. So a lot of the times 
that's why you developed this in the first place. So take a look right here. This is a stiffer, unstretched gentleman running. The feet really just plunk down. They don't really absorb into the big thick muscles like the thighs or the hamstring. It's a little bit of a confusing concept, but what's happening here is take a look. If my left foot can move up like that, but my right foot can move up that much, you can see there's quite a difference between the left foot and the right foot. So the left foot has to turn out to make up for that motion. As it turns out, the knee absorbs more, the muscles like the tibialis anterior absorb more because it has to work at supporting the arch when it lands. So this can make the muscles have to work harder. With a tighter hamstring, with a tighter calf, the tibialis anterior has to work harder to pull the foot up. Look at this symmetrical gentleman. He's well stretched, he's flexible, he's athletic. As he's running, the big thick muscles like the quadriceps, the hamstrings, the calf muscles absorb this running and you don't have to flop out with your foot. Look at this. This is called overpronation where the ankle buckles inwards towards the medial side and the foot turns out. The tibialis anterior and the inside of the ankle muscles have to work much harder in this circumstance and this will cause more pain and tendonitis. And because this happens, you want to help that in a couple ways. You want to get good shoes. So a good shoe is stiff through the middle. It's got a little bit of a heel lift. So this one has about eight to 12 millimeter heel lift. It's got a stiff back. I show my favorite shoes in the guides below. See that right there? It doesn't bend as much. Whereas for example, a shoe like this, look at how much it bends. Your foot muscles have to absorb all of that. So what happens next is you could move up to an even stronger shoe. So I'm gonna put the shoelaces in here, but watch this. This is called a rocker bottom concept. This is heavy duty. Not a lot of people have to get this shoe right off the bat, but see how that rolls? Your tendons don't have to make up for that. Whereas this type of shoe, look at, it just lays flat and your arch collapses and that pushes down on your anterior tibialis tendon, putting even more stress on it. So as you're walking all day, you're getting pretty sore. The next thing is, watch this. When I push down, see how the bone model collapses? Oh, that almost fell on me. See how that collapses? Whereas watch this. When I grab an orthotic, that doesn't collapse. See how the foot's not shooting out to the side right now? And same kind of thing. See how the arch isn't collapsing? I mentioned one of the mechanisms of the anterior tibialis tendon is to preserve the arch. It does not have to work hard and do that. There's always the argument that you're weakening your muscle, but you want the orthotic for when you're sore and having a lot of pain already. So as an example, watch this. When my foot flattens out, in order to pull that foot up now, the tendon has to work hard. That's what leads to tendonitis. So a good shoe with a good orthotic combined will make a big difference for you. You also wanna do some cross training. If you're a runner and you're running every day, take a little break, do some swimming, do some cycling, do some weight lifting. There's lots of other options. Do some Pilates at home. On YouTube, it's free. As a YouTuber myself, I tell people, go watch some stuff online, get some great exercise. You have no excuses now, especially in the Michigan. When it's winter time, you can do it all at home. If it's a tight calf, tight hamstring, tight knee, stretches, rehabilitation, that's the key. So in this example, this is a very uneven runner. They have a lot of biomechanical asymmetry. That means maybe a tight hip, maybe a tight knee, but look at how much that foot has to turn out when it lands. This person is not flexible to run in a high efficient pattern. So what that means is we could do biomechanical exam and analyze why this happens. Look at this gentleman though. His heels match up with his legs. Nothing's really buckling out. And this is slowed down as well. This is probably even a heavier person. So it's not just weight, but it's the flexibility and the symmetry while running. And the root cause is, I'm gonna show this example because it's extremely important. My right foot can flex up, but the left foot has to turn out through the knee to make up for it. So the hip has to work harder, the knee has to work harder, the tibialis anterior has to work harder. Because you're tighter through the posterior column muscles, so your calf muscle, your hamstring, the tibialis anterior, and the extensor tendons on top of the foot have to both work harder and the joints have to swell more to make up for that. So one way to help that quickly is just rotate your ankle. If you've ever seen this for NFL players before a game or a football players in Europe, I'm not leaving this out because this is an international channel. What happens is you want to warm up for a minute or two and you want to stretch. Is it going to be perfect right away? It's not. Sometimes it can take months or years to get equally flexible and heal your injuries, but this can help for the day significantly. So massage 
and then stretch. The towel stretch stretches your calf muscles. I personally like to use gravity. So you can tell right here through my hamstrings, through my calf muscles, holding this for 15 to 30 seconds at a time, taking a little break and maybe stretching my quadriceps in between. I can get back and do this two to three times a day after I warm up for a minute or two and then get the inside of the thighs, get the glutes. This is a massage, uh, or sorry, not a massage board, but an ankle stretch board. So this is like 15 degrees. So I do this while I get drink my coffee or brush my teeth in the morning. I stand on it, it's 15 degrees. A week or two later, I'll work my way up to 20 degrees. Now you have about 25 degrees. Now this is like three to four weeks later, maybe four to six weeks later, I work my way up to this level. And then a couple months later, you're on the top level. And you know, I have a counter in front of me just so I don't slide off of it. And the thing is you want to wear shoes as well. If this helped, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, it really makes a big difference in the YouTube algorithm. Help us out. Thank you. We really appreciate you.